So now I'm going to move on and I'm going to say uh, I'll build on top of this one where I want to actually um, describe the data. So I want the app to actually talk to me and say, this is the data that you have uh, coming out of your Google Analytics account. Um, and it's a bit of fun really, but it's just basically just using this um, new library, which uh, I've been working on recently. And this is uh, calling the Google uh, speech to te uh, text to speech um, API. So this is using uh, Google Language R. Um, and this does translation and things like that as well. You can actually make it speak to you in French as well if you want. Um, but for now, we'll just like uh, uh, do this. Um, so we've got Google Language R, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So how do we sort of modify this to um, make it work uh, with Google Analytics R uh, and Google Language R? Well, the first things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change these scopes because we need to have scopes that work with the language API as well. So um, if you actually, I'll just demonstrate that I know what it is, but we'll just sort of you go here and then look for uh, what was it? Uh, speech. There, you can sort of see that it says, "Oh, you need the cloud platform scopes for that one." So, we'll put that in here. Okay. So that's the first change you need to. Also, need to load the library. Um, now, what we're doing actually is two different types of authentication here. The first authentication will be the shiny one, where people will be able to log in uh, through the app for, to see their own data. But the actual language, Google Language R is going to use our authentication for our app um, separate from that. But that's because it's a paid service um, and it needs uh, its own authentication to do that. So what we're going to do is use um, my uh, Google project. Um, in your case, it'd be yours. And that's because it's linked to a credit card and things like that. Um, and you can see this on the Google Language R um, setup page, how to do this. But basically, it involves... Uh, we, what we need to do is download, um, go back here. <clears throat> so here we have the credentials, which is this, these client IDs are just describing the project that the data will go through. Whereas these service account keys, I've got to be careful not to show too much here, but the service account keys are actually authentic and this will give you access to data. So that's why I don't want to show you uh, exactly. But basically when you create these service account keys, you get a one time only download of the authentication details and that's another JSON file and then you put that in uh, uh, as specified by the, the library how to authenticate. So for Google and language, language R in particular it um, suggests that you put it in a GL auth um, environment argument and that's what uh, you may have seen earlier. That's what this one is doing here. I don't know why that's there. Um, so um, GL auth um, is the JSON file, one-time JSON file that I have. And if, you, if that ever gets compromised, then you, you could lose data and all that. So you need to be very careful that you don't like uh, expose that on the internet. So um, for this, like, because this is on GitHub, this uh, um, project, um, but what I've done is put all the sort of sensitive stuff in this auth file. The credit, the web credentials isn't that sensitive. It's just the app. It, it, yeah, you might, I don't know. yeah, but keep it safe anyway. But it, definitely the authentication ones you want to keep because otherwise people have access all the data. Um, you can go to the interface here and um, and delete stuff if you ever get compromised and things like that. But just you have to be careful. Um, so what I do for this is that we use the git ignore um, and just make sure that the off style here, it off folder is not ever checked into GitHub. Um, because even if you do it by mistake and then delete it later, you know, it'll be in the history of GitHub. So you really never want it to go up there. Um, and I've also put the R environment in here, which is this file, just so, I don't know. But uh, um, yeah, you could have a, a lot of other sensitive stuff in here. There's nothing sensitive here. It's just pointing to, to files. But um, yeah, you, you, it's just good practice to hide that as well. Um, yeah, so once you've done that, now you also remember have to make sure that you've activated the language API. So just check that, text-to-speech, keep forgetting. Yeah, so Google text-to-speech, um, and it's enabled here. If it's not, you just click that button, and then it'll be enabled. So um, so that's that. Yeah, so now how do we actually adapt this so that we're going to 
talk through uh, what's going on. Now, the first thing, um, I actually just nick this from a Stack Overflow question. Um, but I noticed when I was creating the, the talking that um, if you're doing numbers, uh, one, two, three, four, you actually want the ordinals first, second, third, fourth, and um, because it just sounds nicer when it's being spoken uh, back to you. So this is a function that will take a number and put first or nund or rund or th on the on the end of it so that when it's uh, spoken back in conversation, it, it sounds more natural. So that's just something I got from this link here. Um, and so we need that later on. So I'll just put that at the top of the Shiny app just so that it's available uh, to all the functions down that. Um, maybe I should put that in the library itself, I don't know. Uh, it's just there now. So now we, yeah, we're gonna, still going to need the authentication here, so we keep that. And uh, we still need the, all these elements. Um, so really the only difference we're making to the UI at the moment uh, is that we're going to add these two uh, lines. Um, and this is a Shiny module which is uh, um, creates the web uh, player um, to talk back the audio. And this is just going to be the text that we're creating so that we can actually see in case you can't hear the audio or something and see what it's saying. So what we need to do is actually now activate these so that we can see some, some data. Uh, come through. <clears throat> so the server for the server, we're just keeping it all the same, um, but now we just need to add um, some functions that are going to sort of create uh, this output. So we go down here, uh, and here's one I prepared earlier. <clears throat> Classic Blue Peter esque. There we go. So yeah, so this is cheating a bit, I'm sorry, but it, this was actually the longest uh, part of creating this app, um, was um, creating the string that you wanted it to talk, and it's really just sort of style, right? and this is where you kind of want it to be in the style of what you're doing. I'll just sort of describe what I've done. So once you've got the data and the data picker and you've turned into this, what I'm first doing is turning the dates into human dates, and you can do that with this formatting um, here. So and basically, this is a format of which makes it more human sounding. So if I just put in today's date, so uh, you can see it turns Friday, June, when it's actually 22nd of June, and it's a Friday. Um, so it just adds the sort of human uh, language to a date, which is usually just machine uh, language like that. Um, and then we're getting the we're using this function that we defined earlier to add the uh, ordinals to the actual um, days first, second, third, fourth. Fifth. So that's all in in these two columns now. And then uh, actually do some statistics. Uh, and as you know, as normal, it's just like one tiny little line uh, in the uh, in the rest of it. But this is basically getting the uh, trend of a um, of the data and it's going to say if it's going to be trending up or down or if it's just staying stationary and things like that so um, you can depass that as you are it's just it's doing a linear regression on on this data and then this is just a massive paste um, this just makes a massive string for it to talk out um, and it's for the period covering um, 1st of June to the third blah, 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 uh, to uh, the most days. So it, gives you, it just gives you the maximum number for that period, the minimum number for that period, and the trend. Um, and what you put here is up to you. This is kind of what I've worked on here, but um, you know anything you want, as long as you can kind of pull it out of the data. So that just generates a string. So now we've created this string of text. We actually want to output it to the uh, shiny text output here. So we need to create, so this is all the reactive uh, thing here. So to call that, we actually just need to uh, make an output of the text analysis. So this renders the text and it just waits for this transcript we just made and then outputs it straight back again to this uh, text analysis and do anything to it. 
So if we run that and show it here, uh, <clears throat> there you go. And then, yeah, so here we have it. Now we have the sort of text that we want to be uh, spoken. Um, and it gives us sort of uh, all of that. And I worked on that quite a lot just to get all the pauses and commas and things like that in the right place. But, you know, all in good fun. So um, now we actually want to do the talking. So this is uh, relatively simple. Actually, for when I was developing this app, I added some stuff to Google Language R to make this more simple. Um, and basically, it's calling this transcript, uh, this reactive transcript. Um, and then you can set if you want to see the controls or not um, by this. And then these are functions that are passed to this uh, to GL talk, which is a new function in uh, Google Language R here. Um, and there's uh, you can specify the gender, the name, audio. It's um, it's really good. Really. Um, so um, yeah, so now we should have everything in place. Um, and this is we're setting the gender to female here. Um, so if I run this again and uh, log in again for the period covering I don't know Saturday, if you can hear that. August the 26th to Friday, June the 22nd. The most daily sessions was 64 on Wednesday, May the 9th. The lowest number of daily sessions was one on Monday, December the 25th. The overall mean average was 9.64. Overall, the trend is upwards with a change of 0 0.3 sessions per month. Okay, and that, so it's basically made this uh, audio controller here. Um, and then it's uh, talking this thing. So every time you make a change to this, so if you change to there. Then that will update. For the update. period covering Saturday, blah, blah, August blah. the twenty-sixth. Good to turn down every now and again. Um, yeah, but you can Who's see that it? it's uh, creating this. And if you want to actually, uh, I think if you set the controls to false, and uh, we can make this male just to show what you're doing. Uh, run that. Refresh. Login. Okay. For the period covering Saturday, August the twenty sixth uh, to Friday, June the twenty second. It's a mail, but we've got no we can't turn them down. So I've just got my uh, stereo over here that I can do that with. Um so um yeah, so now we have a talking app. Isn't that awesome? So um what we would like to do, so just reviewing what we did basically, uh we added this we added the client um scope. For Google Language R, we authenticated with Google Language R um, with the JSON so that it uh, comes with the app. And then we had this function that changes uh, first, second, thirds to ordinal numbers. We added the modules and the text analysis here. And then we made this transcript and called this uh, module to. Um, uh, actually create the uh, HTML player that talks the uh, transcript. 